Uh, my first guest tonight has shot from the obscurity of being the editor of Private Eye to the dizzy heights of appearing on BBC Two's leading panel game, Have I Got News For You. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Ian Hislop. <laughs> right. Guests are getting into very bad habits and bringing books on with them at the moment. It's a personal so, present. It's a personal present. Who to? <laughs> Mrs Thatcher. All oh, right, jolly good. So, <laughs> these are just the collection of private eye library that's out at the moment. Yes, it's, it's three for your toilet. Three for your toilet? Well, I, I've got one and mine got stuck down my toilet, so I can... <laughs> <laughs> no, I wasn't throwing it away. You, you meant to, to tear it up uh, first, Clive. Absolutely. And use it. But uh, the... <laughs> The Clippings book's a great one, isn't it? Because it's all based on uh, uh, people sending in funny bits from newspapers. So yes. Um, there's a very good picture of Peter Ustinov looking shocked, and it says, yeah. from the Daily Telegraph, it says, Ustinov nearly came in his pyjamas. <laughs> <laughs> Quite funny. He's a very distinguished chat show guest, I don't think... Uh... <laughs> but it is a very cunning play, that, because the, the readers send it in, and yes. then you publish it in your magazine. Yeah, and, and then, then we you publish it again and, and you sell it, it back for them. money. You yeah. could have been in charge of the privatisation programme, <laughs> couldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, now, do you enjoy now you're a sort of superstar on television in addition to being a. Uh, Clive, you are being very <laughs> silly. Yes, sir. Um, <laughs> I'm just because we get an audience that's, you know, some shows would dream of. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we get the same one, it's just half an hour later. <laughs> <laughs> now, it's a big success, and uh, like Paul Merton is currently regarded as the funniest man in England, mm. Angus Deaton is TV's Mr. Sex. Uh, well, what are you? Um, I'm TV's Mr. Other One. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think the appeal of the show is that Angus appeals to, you know, a huge range of people, from 13 and a half year old girls to, <laughs> to girls of 14. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I hope he keeps it under control, then. <laughs> uh, now, all right, let's... Um, if you're a bit twitchy about talking about that, what about yep. Private Eye? You took over the Private Eye when you were about, sort of, 12-year-old yourself, weren't you? Yeah. And uh, so the old guard were a bit rude about you when you first started off. You, you yes. Were talentless and unfunny and useless. Yep, all, all those <laughs> things. But, but, now, but now they're used to you, so... Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now they know it's true. Yeah. Um, but you're no, still there. I'm still there. I was given... When I took over, I was given three months by most of the old guard, and I've now edited the magazine for seven years. Yeah. Um, which seems like an awfully long time. Well, what's going to follow up? Because Richard Ingram's, when he gave up editing, he went on to edit the oldie. Yes. Do you have that ambition eventually? Or no, I want to edit Hello! magazine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually very tired of being so negative and always yeah. knocking, knocking, yes. knocking. I'd like to run a magazine which celebrates mm. people. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think so, because you're such a nice chap in real life, and yet you, you edit this scurrilous That's magazine... That's an appalling which... libel! <laughs> <laughs> When I talk about libels, you've rather missed out on the big libel uh, this year. I mean, are you losing your, your edge, Private? Because the, the Claire Latimer, the caterer, and John Major, yeah. uh, alleged John Major, uh, he. Yeah. he uh, you, that you, won't you, help, Clive. No. <laughs> but, but you weren't <laughs> in that one. It, you, yeah. you missed that story. I mean, well, we didn't miss the story. I mean, the story came in. We have a story about who Major's supposedly sleeping with every week, yes. usually from disaffected Thatcherites. And in, in came the story about Claire Latimer. Yeah. And I assumed it was propaganda from Central Office. Um, <laughs> from Central Office. <laughs> desperately trying to crack their man up as capable of something. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, yeah. So I discounted it immediately. Yes. No, the, the major story keeps coming in. Names range from Justin Fashionu, <laughs> um, Mickey Mouse. Yeah. I'm afraid they're not true. That's why I didn't put it in. It's dreary, but um, yeah. I didn't believe the well, story. That's, that's never stopped you in the <laughs> past, has it? <laughs> um, no, Clive, no, yeah. absolutely not. <laughs> Are you a bit uh, sort of lacking in targets now? Because uh, the great target of Mrs Thatcher's gone, Robert Maxwell's gone over the side of a boat. That's the, that's the right way around, isn't it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, John Major isn't, uh, you know, much of a target for sort of uh, satire, well, is he? Well, people said that you can't do jokes about someone who is essentially a joke. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> I think he's shaping up pretty well. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the other thing, he really cares what you write about him. And the awful thing yeah. about Mrs Thatcher is she didn't actually mind the press much. No. I mean, she wrote most of it. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> and nowadays you have a Prime Minister who sort of reads The Sun and says, oh, my goodness, they're dead right. Yeah. I must muzzle dangerous dogs. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what happened to you. Yeah. <laughs> now, um, what about Mrs Thatcher? Because you don't hear much about her any day uh, anymore, do you? It's, no, uh... I think we, we, um, we satirists did for her. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think. Yeah. No, well, she's it... still around. Yes, I mean, have you been reading the memoirs and thinking you could, you could do a spoof of those? 
I don't think you can actually parody Mrs Thatcher's memoirs. I mean, she stretched the words, I was right, <laughs> to sort of 300,000 pages. <laughs> <laughs> But you've got a book and a TV series and it's... Uh, yes, it's, uh, it's very yeah. good at the BBC. I mean, Mrs Thatcher attacked them for years and years saying you should take advertising and then they just put her on endlessly yeah. saying, buy my book, buy my book. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, what really for the future are you assuming you don't get the prestigious uh, hello job because you've already had your finger in every possible satirical pie. Uh, apart from how I got news for you in Private Eye, you, were on the, the, you do the radio version of Have I Got News For You, the news quiz, and you were involved in Spitting Image for a while. You're a writer or a puppet or something. And uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> so, so what, uh, what, are you, what are you thinking of next? Have you got it's any good other... joke, Clive. I hope you paid for it. <laughs> <laughs> I just make that as I go along here. <laughs> oh, yes, there they are. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you find it, it there, go on. <laughs> Oh, sorry, do you have an answer to that? Or, or are you waiting for your writers to come in? No, you... no, no. <laughs> I was a puppet. Um, yeah. I left the show as a writer, and then three weeks later they put me on as a puppet. Yes. There's Did the loyalty notice? for you. <laughs> 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 uh, what are your other books side? You've got your Cuttings book, you've got your John Major John Major diary, diary book. Uh, again, that was in... That's all the stuff that's been in Private Eye we've bought already, and we're... Yep, and again. it's all recycled. It's packaged yeah. very nicely, and it's yeah. sort of very ecologically sound. Yes. Um, read it again. Yeah. Um, and then there's another book, which is... You'll like this one. Yeah. This is the best of Private Eye. Oh yes, over the last two years. Yes, I think. slim volume that one. I guess. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and you're doing a series, I, I hear, on um, even older satirists. Yes, I'm. I'm doing a series on. I've started a pilot on a Roman satirist called Juvenal. Oh yes, um, the famous delinquent. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> For those. Um, well, he was really. Yeah. For those who think satire started in the 60s, it was. A, yeah. um, about sort of um, AD 60. Yes. And he wrote unbelievable filth about Imperial Rome. Yeah. Which annoyed him greatly. So I'm doing a series on that. Absolutely. And yeah. that'll be coming up next year. And it'll be, what, a book in 18 months after that, I dare say. I hope so, <laughs> and with any luck, I'll be on the show. Yes, right, John. Well, we'll <laughs> see you then. Thank you very much. Ian Hislop. Right. Okay, now. Uh, moving on.